When it comes to 3D printers, most of them can't be controlled wirelessly and supervising them on long prints can be a pain. Octoprint changes all of that, giving you a clean and powerful web interface which can even display a live stream of what your printer is doing. Commonly, Octoprint is used on a Raspberry Pi in the form of Octopi, a pre-built Raspbian image. But is a Raspberry Pi really the best option for Octoprint? <music> Raspberry Pis have really evolved over the time. Now with Pi 4 Model B featuring a Cortex-A72 1.5 GHz quad-core CPU with up to 8 GB of RAM, they are quite powerful. But is that really the best bang for your buck regarding Octoprint? Let me introduce the Futro S900 Thin Client from Fujitsu. It features an AMD G-Series GT44R 1.2 GHz single-core CPU, 2 GB of DDR3 memory, a 2 GB M SATA SSD and a ton of I.O. like 8 USB ports, while two of them being internal, depending on the configuration. While this doesn't sound like much, you can get these for around 15 euros shipped, including a power supply and they already have a case. On the other hand, a kit including the Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 GB of RAM costs as much as 80 euros shipped. But what about the performance of the thin client? In my setup, I'm using DietPi as the operating system and I'm running a single instance of Octopi. The printer I'm interfacing with is an Ultimaker 2 Plus. While being idle, the system uses around 1% of the CPU, with the printer disconnected. Since I also wanted to have a webcam, I installed MotionEye and connected an old VX500 Microsoft Live Cam, which has a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels. With a frame rate of 30 FPS, this adds a steady 10% of CPU load. While connecting to the printer does not change the load at all, printing on the other hand increases the average load to 16%, peaking at 25. Where Octoprint is using 4 to 10% and peaking at 15%. This even leaves enough headroom for controlling multiple 3D printers simultaneously and since there are some Octoprint Docker images available, it would even be possible to run up to three or even four Octoprint instances at the same time. By the way, if you would like to see a video about this and how to set it up, please let me know in the comments. Important! If you want to use the time-lapse feature on Octoprint, you should avoid using multiple instances because rendering a time-lapse after the print has finished will cause Octoprint to use up the entire CPU with up to 97%, which has negative side effects on other instances. While this sounds all good so far, how do you set this up? First, I needed to replace the MSATA SSD of the thin client since 2 GB are not enough to house the operating system and the extra software we are going to install. Here you can either replace the MSATA SSD with a larger one or since the mainboard has an extra SATA port and power connector, hook up a 2.5 inch or even 3.5 inch drive. I chose the second option and went with a 32 gig SSD. Worthy of note is that the power connector is a 4 pin floppy power connector and you need an adapter for SATA drives. So I just made my own with some old cables. Next I downloaded an installer image of DietPi for native PC for BIOS CSM and created a bootable USB stick with Bellina Etcher. I then installed DietPi on the thin client. I also tried using the direct flash image and burned that on the SSD directly, but my system did not want to start. Also, during the first part of the installation process, the system restarts and after that you still need to enter some information with your keyboard. Though after the restart, the display port stops working and you need to use the DVI port. Otherwise, you won't get any output on your screen. Luckily, I had a DVI to VGA adapter so I could connect it to my screen. Then the system will power down and the first part of the installation is done. Next, you will need to connect a thin client with a LAN cable to your network, as we will need to download some more software. After turning the system on, I connected to it with SSH and then DialPi prompts you to update and install further software. The system will reboot again and now we can start installing Octoprint. For that we will run the command DietPi software, then select search, enter Octoprint, select it with spacebar and select OK. Then if you are going to hook up a camera, repeat the process searching for motion eye.
After that, select install and hit enter. DietPy will now install the needed software and restart. After that, you can set up Octoprint as usual. The only difference being that it is available under port 5000 and not 80. To get the camera working, first connect your camera to one of the USB ports and open the web interface of MotionEye on port 8765. Then log in with the username admin with an empty password. Then MotionEye should already have your camera selected and you can set it up. Here I would suggest disabling motion detection to reduce CPU load. To integrate the camera stream into Octoprint, make sure video streaming is enabled and then locate the streaming URL link inside the video streaming options. Next, copy that link over into the Octoprint webcam settings, stream URL field and you are done. Same applies for the snapshot URL, which you copy over to Octoprint's snapshot URL field. FFmpeg should be installed under the displayed link. If not, install it using apt. And that's all it takes to get Octoprint running on a thin client. So you can start printing right away. I will now start printing parts for an upcoming video, so make sure you are subscribed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, as it will help out my channel. So until the next video, bye!